Now that we've looked at the buoyancy of boats, we'll look at icebergs and hot air balloons. So a similar thing happens with icebergs. When ice freezes, it's actually unusual and it expands as it freezes. So ice is less dense than liquid water. This is why icebergs float. So that's why we have the North Pole. The North Pole is formed entirely of ice. With icebergs, a large percentage of the iceberg is found under the water because the density of ice and the density of water, while different, are not especially different. So let's have a look at a demonstration now of an iceberg. What I have here is a fish tank filled with water and an ice block that I've made which is just water with a little bit of blue food dye added to it so that you can easily see the ice. Water is a very special liquid because as it freezes it actually expands. So as it expands it becomes less dense. And so because the ice is less dense than the water, we would expect the ice to float on the water. Let's do a calculation now to work out what percentage of an iceberg we would expect to be underwater. Okay, so what we're doing in this case is we've got an ice block and let's say that it's got some volume V of ice and we're floating it in fresh water. So we know that the density of the ice is equal to 0 0.9167 grams per centimetre cubed and that the density of the water is equal to 1.000 grams per centimetre cubed. Now if this was salt water it would be slightly more dense but in this demonstration it was fresh water so we're going to be using fresh water in our calculation. Now we know that the net force acting on our ice block is zero because the ice block is not moving. So we've got a buoyancy force pushing the iceberg up and a weight force pushing the iceberg down and these two forces must balance each other or the iceberg would accelerate and it's not accelerating it's remaining stationary okay so the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the water displaced so we can call this volume here let's call that V water that's the volume of the water displaced so we, the buoyancy force is equal to the mass of the water displaced times g, which is equal to the volume of the water displaced times the density of the water times g. And the weight force for the ice block is just equal to the mass of the ice times g, which is once again just equal to the volume of the ice block times the density of the ice times g. So now what we want to equate is this part here and this part here. So we've got that the volume of the water times the density of the water times g is equal to the volume of the ice times the density of the ice times g. And these g's cancel out, they're both just 9.8. And so what we wanted to work out was what fraction of the iceberg is underwater. So the volume found underwater is equal to the volume of the ice block times the density of the ice block divided by the density of water. So this, the density of the ice block is 0 0.9167 divided by the density of water which is 1. So this is 0 0.9167 times the volume of the ice block is the percentage that is underwater. So this tells us to get it into a percentage we times it by 100. So 0.9167 times 100 tells us that approximately 92% is underwater. 
Now with salt water it's going to be a slightly lower percentage underwater because salt water is more dense than fresh water. So now that we've calculated how much of an iceberg will be underwater, let's have a look at what happens when we put this ice block into the water in the fish tank. So you can see, as we expected, the majority of the ice block is underwater and just a small fraction of it is on top of the water. Let's do an experiment similar to what Archimedes did now. What we have here is a lump of metal. This is aluminium. Here I've got what's called a Newton spring balance. This will weigh the mass of this aluminium metal here. So we can lift it up and you can see on those scales that this has a mass of approximately 900 grams. Now what we're going to do is we're going to submerge this mass in the water. Now according to Archimedes' principle, there should be a buoyancy force pushing up on this metal equal to the weight of the water displaced by the metal, which should mean that the scales read a lower number when this mass is submerged. So let's submerge it now. Now you can see on these scales, now that it's submerged, the scales are reading approximately 600 grams. Suggesting that 300 grams or 300 millilitres of water has been displaced. So the water which has been displaced by this metal is gradually draining out of this beaker. So as soon as that's finished, we can read off the mass of the, the mass of the water in the speaker, which will be proportional to its volume. So let's read off that mass now. So the mass scales here and the volume is saying 300. So 300 grams, 300 millilitres of water, which is the difference in the force recorded on this Newton spring balance here. Now Archimedes' principle says that the buoyancy force, the upwards force that an object experiences, is equal to the weight of the fluid that it displaces. So with a hot air balloon, it actually experiences a buoyancy force because the air inside the hot air balloon is less dense than the air surrounding the hot air balloon. So in the next video, what we're going to be looking at is how the air inside that balloon becomes less dense. So we'll be looking at the ideal gas law, which allows us to calculate that, the density of the air inside the balloon and hence to calculate the size of the buoyancy force on the hot air balloon.